barking. No, I'm not ready, don't start. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and welcome back to Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Uh, this is session 38. It has almost been a year of us playing Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Um, it's been fun. Um, we've got some exciting stuff potentially happening tonight. We'll see how it goes. Maybe an alliance being formed. Maybe not. I don't know. You guys tell me. So, before we get started, let's jump in with a little bit of a recap. Previously, in the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, the party slept safely on the south ledge of the Crossfire Caves. Ezra, who had taken the last watch, had an uncomfortable visit from Cauldra Cuddlefingers, who was on her way somewhere else. She invited the party to not be strangers, recommended they dispose of bodies into the water, and offered to introduce Ezra to a cousin of hers named Wormriddle. Ezra politely put Cauldra off on all accounts, and the sea hag left. <laughs> Later, the party awoke and readied themselves for more exploration. They traversed the river, though with some difficulty, and headed northward into the tunnels, eventually making their way eastward where they found a second falling stone trap and another impassable dwarven door, as well as the way back to the drow-occupied sections of Stromkolder. From here, the party decided to head back west, further exploring the winding tunnels. They eventually found themselves at a hobgoblin fortification run by Legion Captain Cleuse the Skull Cleaver. The party was briefly interrogated before they were escorted to Azrock's Hold along a winding tunnel with several offshoot caves. Once they finally arrived in the western ruins of Stromkolder, their escort was given over to a pair of bugbears who took them to the registration center. There, a series of goblin clerks took down their information and filed it away. From the registration center, the party was led directly to the feast hall of Azrock, region commander. There, they spoke with Azrock, an imposing hobgoblin figure dressed in dark iron armor, his face shadowed by his weighty helm. Azrock requested introductions, and the party paid him tribute. For this... Azrock granted them his hospitality, as long as they followed the Legion's laws within the hold. It seemed that Azrock, as well as the similarly dressed woman next to him, thought that that would be the end of the matter. But the party was here to see what the Legion was about, and potentially work with them. Matashtai broached the subject, and Ashes, somewhat bluntly, spoke of the demand for Azrock's head that the drow had already given the party. While this caused some outrage initially, Azrock himself seemed unperturbed by the situation. He was, however, skeptical of an alliance with the party. He required they perform a task to prove that they were worthy of such an alliance. That task was to kill an individual named Kinrob that lived in the southeastern portion of the Hold. Azrock didn't demand this of the party, but he did make it clear that he wouldn't consider their offer unless they did this first. After that, he dismissed them, and his mate, Lurkana, escorted them out of the fest hall. Lurkana privately made it clear to the party that this potential alliance would likely be beneficial to all involved, including the city of Waterdeep. With that, the party was escorted south Along the way, they found a crying goblin child whose doll had been stolen. It seemed as though the individual responsible, or at least where the doll had ended up, was the same individual the party had been tasked with killing. When they finally arrived in the southeastern portion of the settlement, they found it almost untraversable. Debris choking the streets, buildings smashed to bits, and narrow winding paths snaking through the area. Their route eventually brought them to the most southeast corner of the hold, at a door marked Crack. Within, they found a small shop filled with odds and ends and secondhand gear. The proprietor was an old hobgoblin, 
smoking a pipe. Kinrob, their target. The party began to speak with him, trying to figure out the situation. But then, two hobgoblins arrived to deliver a basket to Kinrob. They seemed nervous, anxious even, and made haste in leaving. Kinrob, for his part, seemed unfazed by the exchange and returned to speaking to the party. That is when we fade back into the scene as a squalling child is heard from the basket. Alright. Scene transition. Zooming in. Zoom in and <laughs> trouble. Music change. All right. So uh, these two hobgoblins have just rushed away back down the choked um, passageway that has led you here. Right, Kin Rob, the elderly hobgoblin. Um, continues to kind of like lounge on the crates that he is sitting upon, um, puffing upon a pipe, and the goblin child squalls from its basket. So, sorry, so one more time, who dropped off the child? Uh, two, yeah, two hobgoblins, soldiers, showed up with the basket. One stepped in dropped it off, and then they both left hastily. Clearly uh, quite anxious. What's, uh... What's with the child? Oh! Ah. Nothing for you to worry about. Ah, you come to crack. <clears throat> Trade. What have you need of? Uh, I'll start scanning the shop. Is there a porcelain doll? Uh, yes, actually. Um, it's not hidden or anything uh, on the southeastern portion. Remember, right, this whole place is just, like, stuffed with things. It's, it's half, like, caved in already. Like, none of the walls are actual walls. They're, like, rubble landslides, right? So there's, uh, there's, to the southeast, there's a um, section of barrels that are basically acting as, like, shelves. And there's just crap strewn all over the top of it. And sitting upon one of the barrels is a little porcelain doll. It looks like a little china doll of a young girl. Um, it has what probably once upon a time was blonde hair. Uh, but just grime and, and ill-keptness has is, is made it um, almost unrecognizable as, as its original color. Uh, the face, right, you can see is actually porcelain, is cracked in two places, uh, but it, it still holds together. And the, uh, the like, little gown that it's in uh, is just... It's soiled. It has yep. probably been soiled for years. Nice, pretty brown dress. It was <laughs> once white. It was once a color. <laughs> um, um, how much for Princess Twinkle Tits over again? there? The doll? Princess Twinkle Tits. <laughs> I wow. can't remember what it was, can't remember what it was called. Yeah, what was the deal with the doll again? Uh, the, the goblin girl wanted it. Oh, right, 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 right. So, uh, Kinrob kind of, like, looks over at it, and then he looks back at you. Not what I would have thought be after, but... I'm in the market for a couple things. And he kind of like looks down and he eyes, he's looking at your feet, right? He says, 
Pretty nice boots. Sweet feet, take, bro. Do you take gold? Ah. Nah, he takes. He only takes feet fits. I have no need <laughs> for money here. Show feet this guy. Is, <laughs> this is a place of trade. Feet. By the way, by the way, if, he, if he's looking at my current boots, those are my winter boots. I'm wearing my winter gear. Oh, you're hot though. They look nice. D D and it I kind of down here. Shout, shout from the outside out of view. D did you trade for that baby too? Huh. No, the baby's given to me. Why? For sustenance or <laughs> <laughs> Not sure I care for this line of questioning. Do you have want of trade or not? Otherwise, our business may be concluded. I push into the room. I, uh, is the kids in the corner there? Yeah. Is, is So is it like a baby baby? Like It, it is a, it's baby? literally like a wicker basket, right? Okay. Yay big, and there is a baby uh, an infant laid into it and it had a cloth over it and now it's kind of like kicking and squalling right but it's it is very very young it cannot move on its own you would imagine all right so you aren't its parent you, as you kind of like push in, Matashtai, right? And you begin to question. You see Kinrob sit up from his kind of like lounging position. <laughs> I'm not. squaring up? Damn, Jimmy, a robot. Was, it, was that a question mark at the end of that? No, he just says, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Jimmy looks like he's giving testimony on doping. Are you fostering this child? <laughs> For it meal. doesn't matter. No, it probably wouldn't if you didn't keep evading the question. As he is distracted by Matashtai, Ezra's gonna kind of walk away. Distracted. <laughs> trying to get out of <laughs> the shot. Okay. And then he's going to tap the Hasnar Keta and cast Detect Magic on himself. Okay. And then step back into line of sight to see if he can... Uh, roll a stealth check. Plus one, boys. <laughs> hey, not terrible. Not terrible. Yep. All right. Uh, he begins to, uh, to, like, in response to Matashtai's probing, right? Uh, Kinrog begins to kind of, like, stand. And as he does, uh, the frail old hobgoblin form begins to swell a bit. Um... It, it gets visibly larger. Like, he doesn't double in size or anything mm -hmm. like that, right? But he, he it's like he begins to fill out, right? Um, right. Uh, before, before things, like, go to shit, I slam my pair of boots on the table. <laughs> Give me that doll. He's, he can, like, he, so he's clearly, like, he's locked eyes with Matashtai, right? And he's just, like, glaring daggers at him. And the the boots hit the table. He kind of, like, looks down and over at him and at you. I'm currently lacing up my regular boots. <laughs> he kind of nods and he says, Ew. Did, did the swelling seem natural or are <clears throat> Or he am I testing boy. anything with him in range of detect magic? He's swelling. Seems drug induced. 
Um. As if he took a blue pill. As you look into the the room, mm -hmm. um, it definitely feels as though there is magic potentially at play here, right? But what he is doing, his form shifting, does not seem to be magical. In so far, so so as a translation, right? That being like, it it, it probably was magic, you know. A hundred thousand years ago when it was inherited right you know that that kind of concept like it's it's not it's not magic at this point now it's natural ability right it's <clears throat> that it's the same thing as like a, a a doppelganger or something like that a doppelganger isn't magical um when they shape shift um same, same it, for mimic yeah. yeah you know it's it's not magic but there is that residue there right so it doesn't give you a reading as anything like that but it does it's it does obviously this isn't like oh he's just uh suddenly a big boy you know there's something at play there so it, there is no magic in this room that i'm detecting within 30 feet well, well no i mean from my, my party in sure Dark. Um, no, there's no overt magic. There's that residue of magic, right? You're telling me that Princess Buttercup isn't magical? Nope, she is not. <laughs> I think it's Princess Sweet Cup. Princess Bubbles, whatever, I don't... Buttercup is the Princess Bride, get it right, Jay. Princess mm. Sugar Tits. <laughs> As you um, wish. Okay, so uh, Ken Rob reaches out his hand and he puts them on the boots and slides the boots off the table and places them on the crates behind him. And then he just kind of like gestures over towards the doll like you're free to grab it. Uh, it how close is it to the, the toddler? or the? Uh, not, it's on the opposite side of the room. Okay. The doll's on the I southeast. Will, I will go collect Princess Buttercup or blossom or bubbles or whatever the fuck it was okay i just threw all the uh you, power the powerpuff girls? girls yeah you did <laughs> sugar spice and everything nice wow all right and at that p this point right like uh so ashes steps over grabs the doll um kind of steps back and then ken rob um he kind of like uh crosses his arms and he says I think we're probably done. Well, there's still one trade I think needs to be made. He looks at you. And... Someone's about to get their boots back. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, I he think he a slight dick. I think he looks at you, right? Um and I think he goes You're right. And his whole form swells. <laughs> Oh, and geez. pulses oh, and he geez. turns and he goes <laughs> and his like his flesh literally like rips off of it as it is replaced with Jesus. with blue skin and i think everyone just uh select their token and roll for initiative because <laughs> i think every right. noise I'll every feel single less noise bad about this makes is like very tentacly and i don't understand why i'm good at making splooshing so it sounds apparently <laughs> oh lord <laughs> Oh lord. Oh, lord. oh lord. I'm, I'm about to get hit. <laughs> <sighs> like how multiple people in front are the ones that are slow. <laughs> Alright. Uh, let us do a little scene transition. Swap over to this. Swap over to some battle music. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. A slow starting song. All right, top of the round. Ashes, you watch as this great 
blue-skinned, white-haired uh, monstrosity rips itself out of its skin, its, uh, its hobgoblin form, and it grows and swells in front of you, and um, what do you want to do? <clears throat> I rip my sword from its sheath over my back. I grip the sword, hearing the leather tighten as I... <sighs> Uh, oh god. Oh. Uh, I am getting some serious lag in this. I, I might have to refresh, but uh okay. So you um, activate a crimson right? Yes, uh crimson right. I will do the right of storm. Okay. Uh which I will try to designate with lightning despite the fact that it's thunder damage. There's not really a good thunder icon. <clears throat> I, uh, grasping the sword with both hands, I thrust thusly into the monster. Thrusty, thrustly thusting. Thus, thusly thrusted. Um, you thrust, and he almost uh, supernaturally, a <laughs> massive hand shoots out, right? And he bats your blade to the side. Well, as it bats away, I... Get my grip back on it, bring it back. Okay. And swing again. Uh, a damn hit. As if appearing out of nowhere, you hear just metal clash on metal, and you see in this creature's other hand an immense glaive that has blocked your blow. Cool. All right, cool. In turn. Ezra, you're up. Oh, oh boy, that that was not expected, guys. Um, uh, let, let, let me uh, slowly back away because that seems like something I would do. Uh, and uh, as I do, I... Touché. I'm sorry. The, one of the loading the, the loading text for roll twenty said reticulating splines. <laughs> it, it it did. Yeah, that's a that's a like a old old Sim City reference. Reticulating splines. As I back away, uh, pulling out my rod, uh, pull, pushing forward my rod or my staff of adornment. Wow, well, I'm thinking back to Jordan's pushing campaign. Back, where I have a rod. Uh, with the little metal bird that's still flitting about it. And, and, back, and back. as I do, I, I reach out and I look towards both Matashtai and Ashes. And they both feel a burst of speed. Oh, swift. All right. Please don't get unlike, hit this time. Flying, which is <laughs> swift literally dying. As the coursing river. And after I do that, I then take a another step away. Yeah. And positioning myself to look down the tunnel and guard the flank. Gotcha. So now Matashta and Ashes are imbued with the effects of haste. And they are Boys. marked thusly with the Das Boot. Um oh the boot takes up my whole fucking icon. It does. It's cause of the it's cause of the sizing scenarios. Um, on the map, because the map is basically double-sized. So. Anyways, uh... Yeah! 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 Uh... Do it! Do it! The, uh... Big Blue Man steps away from Ashes and Bones. Breathes in deeply. <laughs> uh, ashes, bones, reactions. Um, oh, how smart do you look? If I can get my like character on purpose. Up. Nah, I'm greedy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack it. Anyway. <laughs> I'm greedy. <laughs> uh, the wind spike. Wind spike. 
Um, okay. In the wind. Oh, uh, crit that boy. 17 hits and a crit hits, obviously. Well, enjoy your sneak thousand attack. dice hit the screen. 18, very nice. Okay. How much was that? That's 11, 20, 23? Uh, I don't, is it weak to silver? Oh, no, it's not weak to silver, sorry. I uh, that. 14 yeah. from J. Yeah, 14. So okay. 32. Yeah, I already did the I already did the the bones damage. I was talking about the I calculated the weak to silver. Um just looking damage. at it. So um uh Ken Rob kind of like grunts, right? He pulls away and shifts in front of Matashtai, and as ashes and bones lash out at this opportunity, right, they you both score blows across his large blue form, and he he grunts and kind of growls in pain from it, and but, but he grits his teeth and he pulls his hands outwards, right? These massive mitts, right? Because he is it absolutely huge is this and each finger has this huge black talon just kind of like pulling off of it right and you watch as ice begins to crackle and break across his fingers and he claps his hands together and <laughs> I need all of you I believe. Let me double check. Does it wrap around corners? Uh, I need all of you to make dexterity saving throws. Ezra does so at advantage. So does Matashtai. So does Ashes. So does Matashtai and Ashes because of the haste. Oh, yikes. It's still not probably... Uh -oh. Your... Uh -oh. oh, is it? Oh, shit. Sorry. My bad. Is it constitution save? It's a constitution save. It's not oh, a dexterity God. save. Thank God. Good. Oh, I, I take back. Suck. I apologize. No. Um, so Ezra still has advantage, but the other two do not have advantage because that's only. So it's dex. a constitution. It's now? a constitution save. I'm sorry. I did. I thought Cone of Cold was absolutely dexterity, but it's not. It's con. Almost all cold is con. That's interesting. That is because yeah. you know it's flavorful. I I, I feel you. Yeah. All right. So. That's why you took my winter boots. That's the, he's always cold, right? <laughs> oh God! He oh, knew. Good, good, good gracious. Um. Okay. So, Bones and Ezra take half damage. Ashes and Matashtai take full. So, Matashtai, you take thirty-six cold damage as a torrent of icy uh -huh. wind and and just literal ice shards fire out from this creature. Okay. Um, Ashes, you have resistance to cold, right? Infernal constitution. So you take half. Um, so that will be 18, right? 18? 18. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then Bones and Ezra also both take 18 as they are able to resist some of the cold. And I have succeeded in my concentration check. Concentration success. That's really fucking important. <laughs> Holy shit! Show is. Oh, that would have been that have been a moment right there. Um, okay. As soon as he shifted, I knew what was coming, and I was swearing under my breath. Is is what is what the Oni do? All right. Yeah. Uh, you watch as you watch as uh, Ken Rob unleashes this torrent of cold, which, by the way, because of y'all's positioning, barely misses the child. <laughs> <laughs> if if Ezra had gone to the other side, then Kinrob would have positioned in front of Bones instead, and he would have got the kid. That's shitty. Not, I don't know that that matters to you guys, but just throwing that out there. Matashtai, you're up. You have just been f -f 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 frozen. What would so, you like to um, do? So, uh... Do you think you could add this to the list of creatures that are stunnable by uh, Matt? We're gonna find out real quick. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna pull out Tan. I'm gonna pull out Tan Bakiri, um, and I'm actually gonna shift over here, and I'm gonna start walking up the wall 
to okay. get a better like fucking like, oh. step down on this fucker. <laughs> gotcha. How far? Oh, okay. Because if you walk too far up. Actually, I don't think you could walk too far up. There's not enough ceiling to walk too far out of his melee range. Actually, so really, I'm just trying to get you're just, just for flavor. You're just I'm poking just, at like, his head to like yeah. head level, so I can. <laughs> Absolutely, cool. Um, and so then I'm going to attempt to hit him once. That's a hit. Twenty-four to hit. I'm going to attempt to stun that man. All right. What's your DC? Uh, 14. 7. 26. Seven. Whew. Seven. Okay. Good, 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 <laughs> good, good. I uh, hit him again. He is not stunned. Uh, that is, that is definitely a hit, though. I attempt to stun him again. Ooh, 12 damage. Ouch. Okay. Another... No. Okay. I use my extra attack from him. He's not on the list. <laughs> strike at him. I continue to strike. Oh my god, you, you definitely never, hit. Never ceasing the striking. Absolutely, you hit. Damn, you're hitting hard, too. I okay. attempt to stun again. <laughs> no. That's a key point every Absolutely time you not. Do it, right? It, it is. Sure is. <laughs> he is running, swiftly running out of key points. But he oh, also this is all we're, all we're doing today anyway. Yeah. Oh, is that the plan? <laughs> only yep. only this? That's it? Jeremy m yeah. making a mental note. All right, not the only thing they're doing today. Duly noted. Right. I will keep and that in mind. I'm going to use my bonus action to chug a fucking greater healing potion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Is you that 44? Your health bar yeah. is not on. Uh, 44 uh, plus 4. Yeah, oh, his... He he is uh, looking very rough. Matasha I I looks ate that. Very I ate all of that. Uh, it was average. Yeah, you're the only one that ate all of it, too. Which is really unfortunate Man, was, that it I was wasn't Dex. For that like, I for sure would have been okay with Dex. I would have been fucked if it was Dex. Oh well, my goodness. I would have been <laughs> at advantage with Dex. And it is now Bones' turn. Bones, uh, the icy torrent is unleashed. You are able to resist a portion of it. You watch as Matashtai walks up the wall and begins to repeatedly lash out at this creature's face, um, who is unsuccessful in fending Matashtai off, right? Um, but he is consistently resisting Matashtai's uh, stunning yep, I him. jump up on his counter. Okay. And I'm going to stab at him. Right, stab right at his pectorals. The pectorals his... that he's so proud of. The pecs. Oh no, not his pecs. <laughs> his shiny blue uncovered pecs. I mean, he's got to like them if they're not covered, right? Uh, 16. Just hits. Snake tech. Snake tech. Twenty-seven damage. Snake tech. God dang. Big snake. That's yeah. some yes. big snake. That's big snake attack. A lot of fives. That is absolutely a lot of fives. It's just fives. Very nice. <laughs> Whoops! All fives. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> o oopsie doodle. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, anything All else right, from you, Bones? Uh, I'll use okay, my bonus okay, action to drink yeah. a normal health potion. Okay, so you jump up, you slash across his chest, right? A font of blood blossoms, and Delicious. he kind of like howls as that happens, and he turns on you, and he, he looks just growling, just very angry at all of and you. And I go, <laughs> I see you. <laughs> all right. Uh, Ashes, we are back around to you. Um, I step, oh God, it's so laggy. I step in. It's not laggy for me, And dude, with my you. new found speed, I strike at this man. I strike mm -hmm. this man many times. <laughs> That's a hit. Oh my god, I thought that was going to be a two again. I was like, god damn it. That's a miss. Wow. And that's a hit. Okay, so roll gonna, the damage for the first one. Yeah. The wall. That's a dead oh, baby. Roll the damage for the first one. His sword yeah. flips over his yeah. shoulder, yeah. lands directly in the child. No, no, no. Hold oh, up. No. Roll okay. the... Confirm the critical. You got it. Uh, also, you have a uh, uh, hemo... Right damage. Yeah, right damage. Right? Yeah, hemoglobin. Yeah, right, I would say like hemoplague. <laughs> All right, so this is just to go along with the eight. Yeah, so that's with the eight. Okay, so, so that's that ten damage. Ten damage on the first hit. Now confirm the critical. And here is your d20. Oh. Close. Oh. Close. Okay, 
Then and Ash is the baby damage. killer. No! Ash is baby killer Johnson. <laughs> yeah, I was looking for a last buy, name. Buy a doll for one kid while he kills another one. Just out, outright kills another. <laughs> balance <laughs> balance in all things. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, so the third hit does hit. Roll your right damage. Here's the damage, and here's the right damage. We well, already rolled the damage. Oh yeah, I already rolled the the regular damage. The right damage Five is plus two, so seven. Seven. All right. Um, so you turned. step forward and you 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 hack across him. Right, he fins off your second blow, and then you get a thrust into his gut, and he is just roaring furious at all of you and you're all like this is not like super calm this is like a whirlwind that's going on in this like little fucking shop so shit's getting thrown up all over the place like you're cracking crates as you step on it right gears going flying that's off of stuff as ezra's outside brushing the frost so. <laughs> <laughs> ezra like one half side of you is like frosty yeah. and like an icicle is like snapped off yeah. what do you want to yeah. do are you done? Did you use your bonus action? I he did three attacks. Yeah, because yeah, of I haste. Three. Oh. You want to get more than three? Yeah, because you're hasted. It, you only get one additional no. attack. I thought he it was an, three. Uh, did one you? additional. He, he gets a double, and then he gets one additional. Yeah, what do yeah, you normally you do with your, your bonus attack action? action? Which is two attacks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then you get right. the attack from haste. Yeah. Yeah. What do you? That's what do you? Uh, that's, that's what we're. He, yeah, he's asking. What do you normally do with your bonus action? It's when you're in wolf form. That's when you get the bonus action attack. Yeah. yeah. Do you have anything you're doing with your bonus action? No. Okay. I thought okay. that's what I was doing with the third strike. No, no, no. Do you guys remember the uh, Disney Channel? Original <laughs> the third movie strike doesn't count as a bonus action. That's just an extra attack that you can have. So you still have a bonus action if you're if you want to do something. I mean, with it. Uh, does haste give me an attack on bonus action? No, it does not. It does not. No, haste I don't. I don't have a way to do that unless I, I'm in lichen form. Okay. No, I, so. Yeah, I think Jake was just asking if there was something you wanted to do with your bonus action. No, I have no plans on using okay. my bonus action at this time. Sounds cool. Okay. Ezra, you're up. Don't want you to be robbed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ken robbed. And unless there's something I should be doing with it that I'm not... I don't know. You're the one who has, like, 15 different bonus yeah, action I mean, I things. Could, I, could... I don't fucking know. You tell me. <laughs> uh... You know what? Fuck it. I'll, uh... You don't have to. I will cast... <laughs> Uh, Searing Smite. Okay. There. Your weapon begins to glow Smite. like the hot. Thunderous red energy hot. is now enveloped also in a reach. Jay, did you get bullied into using I your bonus I think he action? did. Yep, I did. <laughs> Absolutely. Like me the entire way just going like, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> and then Jeremy sticks in his ass. Jake, what would you like What's to wrong do? wrong with you, Zach? Jesus Christ. Well, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. If you're wow. not comfortable, just, you know, just let me know. Oh, my God, Zach. Okay. Uh, Jake. I'm going to send Ezra. out memos to everyone in the Oklahoma area. What would you the like? Women don't date this man. I'm not on a list. Fuck off. Ezra is <laughs> forward so he can see the hulking uh, Absolutely. ogre-esque individual. Uh-huh. Uh, and then he's going to summon a spectral hand to rake at it. <laughs> oh, get uh, raked. That, yeah, that's a, that's a rake. Absolutely, it's a rake. rake. Very cool. How do you want to kill uh, him? Oh, boy. <clears throat> wow. Yep. Uh, you guys are a DPS group. Like, the amount of damage you guys can front load in a single turn is extreme. I was... I am I am happy how this turned out actually because I was very afraid that it was either gonna be like he knocks your haste off and then starts to kill all of you or or this happens I would rather this happen so Ezra how would you like to, to do this uh, so I'm picturing 80 my goddamn bonus, my 80 task, 
uh, lichen, like silver bullet style, okay, right across the face where it's just you see the claws, <laughs> and then okay, energy just begins to blossom outwards and it, it, it's almost like he he almost does like the disintegrate thing right where he kind of like yeah. as he falls to his knees this big hulking form you watch as a portion of his face just begins to literally like dust away from the necrotic energies and he kind of <sighs> <sighs> and it's like he's gonna say something and then he just collapses and and breathes no more. Oh boy. Um so, sorry. I I Oh boy. Is everyone okay? You the the immediate silence filled or the immediate silence following the clash of uh of steel, right, and spells and etc, right? is followed by all of your kind of like momentary like heavy breathing icicles kind of clattering down off of the outer rim of the doorway right because it was like full blast there and then just this ah! 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 right this just horrid goblin baby screaming uh, I have a question real quick. With spider climbing boots, yeah. does gravity just pull me towards wherever my boots are? Yeah, basically. How does that work? Yeah, in, okay. in theory... So, like, if I, like, lean over, yeah. like, breathing heavily, I'm going towards the wall? <laughs> yeah, you're just, like, oh, oh, on the side of the wall, <laughs> basically. Okay. I like to imagine, like, the further you are away from the the wall itself, right, like your head probably dips a little bit right like the further away from the boots you are the more it's like grab and so you kind of like lean just a tad but it's not like it's not like an angle it's more like a it's just that your head just your head feels heavy right to one yeah. side <laughs> got it okay <laughs> so, so yeah, then matt's just like up on the wall just like <sighs> Just kind of like shakes a little bit of like the frost off of his clothing. <laughs> through through my and he um, falls from the he just falls from the wall. Just blunk. <laughs> through through my uh, tiredness, I still find the the strength to attack the dead corpse as not to waste my searing spite. <laughs> <laughs> like, there a moment passes, and Ashes steps forward and basically does the sword plunge, the <laughs> and fire, flame just blossoms outwards and starts to race over the mm -hmm. corpse of. But while the it Oni. does, you hear thunder. Ooh, thunder. It, it it makes the goblin child even more terrified, and it's right. its screams renew with greater vigor. As you, as you basically Mr. Holland's opposite. <laughs> What'd you do? Cut off its head? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what, what did you do? He Mr. stabbed, Holland's he up. stabbed the dead body. Oh. oh. Well, he stabbed the child. Like, what? I, Hold up. I, no, no, no. Alright, I guess I go to cutting off its head. I mean, we, we gotta bring something back, right? No, yeah, that's right. That's what you were told. So... I'll, uh, I mean, you're gonna I'll clean in. to that. I'm gonna grab the baby and like carry it out. Each of you, I'm gonna remember this. It's fine. This will probably be the least traumatic part of its upbringing. Um, each of you gain 750 experience for besting Ooh. Kinrob. Woo! Fucking Oni fights are like. Oni fights are so intense. Onis, I think, are kind of on that edge of being oddly balanced. Cone of Cold is one of those spells where it's like, it's so hard hitting that yeah. if, if you are just, like, if you guys, you guys are level seven right now, right? If you were level six, right. that, that could have one shot multiple of you, right? So it's that, it's that thin, razor thin line with Cone of Cold where it's like, way too it's so powerful big. Like, it's, just like huge. it's so big it's so fucking big it's, it's immense oh my god 
Yeah, no, that would have one shot me if it wasn't a con save, which is a sorcerer's thing. Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, what does so, this man have going on? Is this man a humanoid? Is this man a demon? He's uh, like a demon. Onis count Demony. as neither humanoids nor demons. Demony. Actually, dope. I I go to cutting out some of its bones. Then. Um, and so as you as you begin to kind of flay this man to get to his bones, right? Uh, you see. Um, actually, let's uh, let's do this. Roll me a nature check, bones. Let's Dan, see. Does he not have bones? Let's see if you oh can tell God. me. Boneless. He's just no, he has he has bones. He absolutely oh. has bones. Ooh, ooh, I like this. I like I like the concept that Bones has kind of like seen this before and it sparks his mind. Okay. So oh, um okay, yeah. so the Billy structure yeah. of yeah. the creature is absolutely reminiscent of a humanoid, right? But it's reminiscent of a humanoid on a significantly larger scale. The bones are far bulkier, and they actually seem to have other minerals inside them like uh, large portions of other minerals inside them beyond just normal calcium and, and that type of scenario right damn mineral bones Hell you yeah. you see like there are thin veins of you don't know like some sort of stone um and this is relative this is familiar to you you're not an expert on it necessarily but these are these are the bones of giant kin Damn, I don't consider those humanoids, so I'm gonna cut his bones out to use. Let's cut the fuck out of his bones. So what are you what are you going after? Wow. Hmm. Hmm. I, I really liked his hands because he's got cold stuff. He's got these massive got ass mitts. mitts. Just massive ass mitts. And he's also got like these oh. crazy large he's almost like built like a gorilla esque almost, like <laughs> immense oh, arms. Femur? Right? That that femur's gotta be like a fucking great club. Yeah, I really like some. Uh, he's kind of got the Johnny hand. Bravo thing going on, basically. Like he's very oh, big what upper if he half, his hands, but missing leg day. What if you turned his hands into claw weapon? Ooh. What if? Okay. So yeah, I, wanna, I, want you his, want I want his hand. Okay. Um, make. Maybe your... I'll put some some ribs if I have time. Um, hands. let's start with the hands. Uh, so your roll. Let me let me pull your stuff open because I got to. <clears throat> Gotta remember what the bone, bone carving rules are. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. All right, bone carving I don't think rules. High enough to give me anything good. Uh, roll me a bone carving check. I'm I'm carving bones. Carving bones. Ooh. Oh, pretty, pretty okay. <laughs> it's funny, actually. Um, that is uh that is right where he is at. Um, he is a CR seven creature, so you are able to you're successful in um, basically like deboning and demitting this oni, deboning. right? Hell yeah. Um, so you get these basically very large. They're almost like bear paws, right? In like oh, the size and strength of what you would consider them to be, right? But they're. Uh, instead of like really clustered like a, a kind of like um i don't know like chubby in the center they're more elongated like the fingers actually end in very large long black talons which you're able to preserve <clears throat> in the removal process okay damn talons oh, um and uh this is an uncommon bone uncommon bone Okay, so I got my, I got some hands. What is it? Oni hands. Oni hands. Uncommon Shit. Oni hands. Uncommon. What about, what, what, what about some ribs? Do so it is, ribs? it is about that time, right? Um, Cause this takes a few minutes for you to kind of like hack off the hands and flay them. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what is everyone else doing in this time period? Well, he's doing that. Like I take the kid out. Okay. Kinda like trying Hold to rock out. it and like calm it down if I can. Okay, let's let's see uh, Matash Tai's parenting skills. How yeah, how are you trying handling. to soothe? Yeah, give <laughs> Actually, animal, animal handling, animal handling is not a bad <laughs> check, honestly. For this, look, we never get to roll animal That's handling. That's why it's funny. If you if you want to use animal handling, you absolutely can. Boom. Man, we just we just got. That's not bad, right? I, I handle that animal. 
it is it is a tent <laughs> it takes it takes roughly half the time of bones like cutting and carving away this this child continues squalling but you eventually like you get it out of the basket you're rocking it you're bouncing a little bit and it, it like goes into that kind of like faces at it like child everybody... moment right Matt just looks like a total fool while he's doing this, but he don't care. But it it does it does eventually soothe the child, calm it down. It stops screaming. You can tell it's still kind of like on edge, right? It's looking up at you with these, and they're almost like alien esque, right? Like a if you look at like a baby's eyes, they do the big wide eyes. But but this is a goblin. Its eyes are like this big compared to its freaking head. Right. Those are some big old eyes. So like it looks at you up with these glassy black eyes. Like it doesn't have it doesn't have like pu- irises or anything that you can like determine color or anything like that. They're just like they're almost like bug eyes, right? They look up. It oh, looks up at you. Baby with these, Yoda. Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> baby Yoda, but even bigger eyes. Um, Get it right. So, um. And so this this thing uh, kind mm-hmm. of begins to kind of gurgle at you, um, and it it coos, but it does so in an almost kind of like hissing way, right? And you look at it, and it's got these little bitty like serrated nubbin teeth, and it kind of. <laughs> It's kind of like clawing at like edges of your vestments, trying to like nibble on something. Like, I grab a piece of jerky and let it <laughs> keep it, on that. So like, so like it's infants. It, it's infant size to the point where like, it, with a normal baby, you might be like, nah, you can't give that thing solid food. This thing like grabs the grabs the jerky, like snatches it, right, and starts to oh nah, 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 nah. kind of like gnaw on it, like. A wild beast. Um, okay. Anything else happening while while both of these scenarios are going on? While, okay. while this is going on, Ezra's going to start uh, rifling through the shit. Okay. To see if there's anything of value or useful equipment. Roll me an investigation check. Yeah, there's fucking blood everywhere, just all over everything. Yeah, the the fight was like a a whirlwind, right? So it, it's kind of that scenario of like it, a whole bunch of stuff is smashed and strewn about. There's blood everywhere. You you rifle through a couple things. There's there's stuff in here that would be useful, right? If you didn't have something, like if you needed a um a, a harness with a broken strap right if you needed a backpack where two of the pockets are ripped out and unusable right if you if you needed a sling that's it's serviceable but it's it's seen better days right all of this is hand me down second uh tier goods it's a trade shop right so it's like the goblins or bugbears probably not the hobgoblins because they get actual <laughs> so good the question stuff is, right what's wrong with the baby <laughs> Hey, so. hey, Ezra, Ezra, you want an eight and a half foot pole? There's one in the corner. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's shit like that, right? Like, it's not a ten foot pole, it's an eight and a half foot pole, and it's it's really rough, so you're going to get splinters. You know? Well, you have skeleton hands, so oh. should be I fine. Anymore. Ah, no, shit! He, he got, you, you, see, you should have, they would have been an asset, Ezra. <laughs> Would have been, been an asset. I would have still somehow got a splinter and it just like... It would have been great. Over. Anything that you guys ran up on that you were like suspicious about like actually harming living matter, you could have just had Ezra like dip his skeleton hands in. It would have been fantastic. Yeah. Until it turns out to be holy water. Uh, yeah, and then you're fine. <laughs> Which we uh, have. Okay. D- depending on how long it takes, eventually Ezra would make his way to rifling through the Oni's person, if that is. Okay, so so you do, bro. He bloody. I cut off his head. I'm I'm flaying his hands apart. Like goddamn, you, dog. You absolutely go Jesus. about that. Uh, about that process, right? Um. The Oni can rob. Um, after a thorough investigation of both his his shop and him, his own person, it seems as though he was uh, truthful, 
piece of right? shit. Right, in, in his statement of he has no need for coin or or riches, right? Um, it doesn't, he doesn't seem to have anything of value um, outside of serviceable value, right? Like, he has goods that are useful somewhat for actual functions. Um, I will say this, the doll, right? Um, Princess Sweet Cups, I believe is her name. Um, she does have uh, little button eyes, right? Um, and she has a little gold cloth tiara with, uh, so the, the, it's not like actual gold work or gold lace or anything like that, but there are itty bitty like rhinestones set into it and they look like they might be of some small value. <laughs> I mean, I I'll take it and I'll like kind of beat it off and just. <laughs> yeah, beat it off. I mean, I'm not gonna. No, I'm not. No, I'm not gonna hit it. Okay. I'm just, are you? I was I'm, trying to I'm determine whether or not you were it. actually attempting to extract these or not. Okay. Gotcha. No. So, so, um, uh, as this is all happening, right? Um, uh, a few minutes pass between calming the child, uh, uh, harvesting Kinrob's hands. Um, are you guys? Did you also take his head? Yeah, I took his head. Okay. Um, and then Ezra is kind of looking around. Um, Ashes, you've moved northward a little. Are you kind of like uh, keeping I am, an eye uh, out? Just, or? I'm wa keeping watch. So, yeah, Ashes, you get... begin to hear, right? You begin to hear this. <laughs> I'll lean back and let everybody know that people are coming. Um, I continue to cradle the baby and hopefully have it calm down. Yeah, at, at this point, it's it's relatively calm, right? It's do it's okay. chewing on the jerky that you gave it. You know, it seems uh seems contained. I guess is the word I would use there. <laughs> All right, then I'll move over to the side here with the kid. I'm just kind of. Keep out the way. Um, a few moments pass, and then all of you can kind of hear this tromping as uh, a troop of hobgoblins approach. Eventually, Ashes, you can kind of like make them out through the 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 broken down walls and the rubble. You can kind of see them winding their way, and and just like you had when you originally approached, kind of like stepping over the fallen debris and they're taking their time they're not rushing um they see you right and they kind of like see that you see them um and there's no like look of alarm or anything like that um there is ashes there is a so there are two of these individuals wearing the red sashes right the captain's sashes um the rest all seem to be normal grunts the grunts, they all have, they all kind of like, you see it for an instant. They give, uh, they see you, right? And they kind of have these wide eyes. Like they're, like they're surprised for a second, right? Damn, are you, wolf are you wolfed out? No, no. I'm not wolfed out. No, I'm he's not, not wolfed no, out. They're just surprised. I mean, they probably haven't seen teethlings either, not well, really. Well, I thought you no. got pressured into wolfing out. They're surprised no. to see you guys alive alive uh, yeah so uh so they they come forward right um that one back and uh one of them one of the red sashes steps steps up um and he kind of like holds out a hand and you hear the tr troop stop behind him and then he kind of like steps forward um towards you ashes kind of like looks past you nods to you and says in very, very broken common, right? He says you success yes it's done uh -huh. and he calls back and he calls back in goblin um and he basically, what he calls back is he says uh along the lines of stand down we don't need to kill anything today <laughs> um 
Oh, they're... they came here to finish off what we started had we failed. Um, so this, uh, this hobgoblin captain, captain kind of after he calls back and he turns towards you and he, he nods and he gives you this kind of like appraising look and he can see that you're a little banged up. He sees like a part of your, uh, your skin kind of like, it's almost like you were b burned, right? It's kind of like the skin looks like it's marred and stretched and dried, right? From I the blast of the cold. A third of my HP. Yeah. And, um, so like he can, he can tell that you all uh, saw some battle, right? And it's it's probably about this point that uh, that Bones steps out of the I was say, when I, shop. Whenever I'm finished, I'm gonna come out, right? And, and <laughs> just <laughs> covered in blood. I do some real macabre shit. Hey guys, <laughs> you've got the head like tied to your belt, and you're playing with these massive oni hands that have been fucking flayed Whoa. and like de deboned, basically. Um, I go coming up cold. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I'm a off like a off and the uh, the hobgoblin kind of uh, nods at you, right? Um, and he uh, he taps his chest, uh, ashes, and he says, <laughs> "Rolvuk." Rolvuk, that's his name. R that, and he he kind of like points to you. Me? So, uh, what is no, that? no, to ashes. He He's talking to ashes. Oh. And, and what did he say? He and, said, and, and... he tapped his chest and he said, R Rolvuk. And. Oh, that's his name. He's... Okay. Oh. Gotcha. Um, Ashes. He nods. Fearsome. And, um, uh, I'll get him and his men. And I'll say in Goblin, brave. Ah, uh, he nods at you. And, and in Goblin, he says, it is easier to speak in this. Uh, yeah. You native, and your like party. still has an accent in his native tongue. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> You and your party must be strong. We, we've seen our share of battle. Inrub was no ordinary opponent. We thought to remove him ourselves, but on a number of occasions, he outright killed many men. Right, um... I don't know if this is going to be a concern, but um, he had a child with a baby. Yes. Was the was the word? Uh, <clears throat> can trade? Not trade. Uh, In Ash's mind, you hear. What y'all doing up there? Because <laughs> oh. I don't speak goblin, so I have no idea what the fuck's going uh, on. It's the it's the co not uh, fuck. What am I thinking? Um, I my mind's actually blanking. It's when it's like you... the fucking tax for him not going crazy and killing everybody. Basically, yeah. It's it's okay, uh cool. it's basically like he he tells Ashes in no uncertain terms that um the that the deal that was made was that uh, the Legion would provide a child on the occasion so uh, in and Kinrob would not do anything to the Legion basically that's a fucking wow, shitty that's... trade it, it is a shitty trade absolutely oh, but, I don't know. Goblins well, are that's like a trade a coward trade. would make <laughs> no, <laughs> no it's, you didn't uh, hear that conversation <laughs> Yeah, you you don't hear that conversation, but uh, he says that to you, Ashes, Thank and he says it kind of he says it matter of factly, right? Um, and he looks at you. He, he basically he straight up says that uh, a child for Kin Rob's not doing anything. 
Well, um, that contract is null and void. Yes. It would have been by the end of this day, regardless. But you have made it easier on us. For that I am thankful. I would rather my men go home. Glad to be of service. He probably wouldn't say it like that. He would probably he he probably wouldn't say home. They are home. He would say, um, I would rather my men live another day. There are drought to kill. <laughs> and <That's> how? <laughs> so, um, uh, he's R Rolvuk is not a s overly chatty fellow, right? So he says this to you. He nods and he says. We should not tarry. Azrock will want to hear of this. Are you and yours well enough to travel? I look back. Hi. Uh, right. Seems like a... We can walk. Good. We can take our time. You have injuries. But. We will escort you. It's appreciated. Um, okay. So, uh, uh, Rolvuk steps back, and uh, there's some brief conversation, and the troop of hobgoblins begins to march forward. Uh, I'll, I'll just relay what that conversation was, just so that nobody's left in the dark. Okay, gotcha. All portions Damn, of the I conversation? Slap I slap ashes on the back with the hand. I say, good job, my dude. I walk past. No, wait, what do you slap me with? The only hand, my dude. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's, isn't it, is it a full hand or is it just like the bones and ligaments? No, I just cut the hands off. Okay, so you still have the oh, hands God. in full. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> okay. Um, I can't oh. control the child token, but I bring it with me. Mm, uh, sounds sounds perfectly plausible you have a child with you should i need to put it on the map for its own safety i will do so but in the meantime uh, it's just in your hands so jeremy i'm like experiencing some terrible lag in sure 20 could you could you token me uh absolutely let's do this actually yeah, no lag do yeah, you guys come back do you guys want to do anything on your way, or are you okay with yes. them just straight escorting you to... I, I would like to try Azor to find story. our little goblin girl. Okay, so are you going to do that of you your own volition, by? or are you going to tell Rolvuk and the troop that you would like to, to stop? Yeah, I, I would tell them, um, I took a job for somebody along the way, if you don't mind uh, me dropping off. Right. the requested item fantastic okay so we will do that um they do uh they do kind of like do a uh uh not a surround you type thing right but they mm -hmm. do do the this is two different squads and they do let one squad lead you and the other squad follow you Watch um you know back in, gotcha as they are as they are, are <clears throat> escorting you though um they spend as much time you 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 all see this right the hobgoblins spend as much time looking around corners as if waiting or trying to find some hidden boogeyman right they they spend more time looking for other people than they do keeping their eyes on you good good that's so. weird i thought it was their territory it is which is why they make keeping it that way okay um you guys make your way up to this section and this is where you had seen the huggy bug previously um so uh, you don't hear you don't hear a bunch of noises or anything now, um, but you do see this little goblin child as you are heading through this place. Yeah. I'll 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 walk up to her. Okay. And I'll put 
both my hands on on my thighs, and I'll bend down. And I'll be like, and I'll say, in "Goblin, come here." Jake, um, come here so she page. she kind of seems a little, um, like dodgy, confused, right? Um, but eventually, she kind of like she kind of does the golem walk, where she's kind of like, you know, yeah, kinda like kind of coming over to you. Um, what and a genius, she, <laughs> right? Uh, and she says, ah, ah, you. And uh, out from behind my cloak, out walks her little doll being held by my tail. By your tail. <laughs> animated walking out towards her. Prehensile tail. Gotcha. With my prehensile tail that, so that she may take it. Sure. Um, she uh, it just cries out, right? Um, she, she yells happily. She rushes forward and attempts to kind of like envelop the doll right um uh, she begins to babble um to her doll to to princess this tea teacup or something like that princess sweet cup princess 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 something (laughs) i think it's princess sweet cup um but she um she while she is speaking to the doll right she kind of like temporarily gets you um and she's hugging it and she's squeezing it and she's kind of crying with happiness um and oh yeah geez she's muttering about you know missing her only friend and <laughs> so glad to see her again and one phrase stands out specifically to you she says she never thought she'd get to see her princess again after she was taken to the gob gobbler Oh. Oh, well, that's a that's a macabre nickname for getting robbed to have. Yeah. Um, well, I will I will pat her little head and as you pat her head, right? Like she kind of like comes back to reality and she looks up at you and she kind of blinks these big black glassy eyes and, and she goes, "Oh!" And wait. And she turns and she runs away. Um into her little like hidey hole, right? And you can hear scrabbling around for a second. Um, and then she, uh, after a few moments pass, she comes rushing back out Gollum style. <laughs> and clutched in her hand is a roughly fist-sized, not shaped though, but fist-sized turquoise dolphin figurine. Um... And she kind of, like, holds it out to you. Um, take it. Uh, yeah, yeah. It sticks in your hand and you can't get rid of it. <laughs> no. It has heft. <laughs> <laughs> and she, poof, runs away. No. She, uh, so she, she kind of, like, she says, uh, she says in a, a smiling like she has a smile, big serrated teeth, and she says, "Crack." Um, and uh, then she kind of like just toddles off happily. Uh, you can go ahead and notate that um, uh, turquoise dolphin. Turquoise um, dolphin, the inventory. And uh, it, like I said, it has some heft to it. It feels valuable, and turquoise is a valuable gemstone. So, mm-hmm. um. But at the same time, Ooh. all of you can gain 350 experience points for the quest of returning Princess Sweet Cups. I've returned. Add 350 experience to your character sheet, Mitch, for Ooh. fulfilling the quest of returning Princess Sweet Cups. Oh, cool. It warms the cockles of your heart. The cockles. The cockles. All right. Anything else that you guys would like to do, or are you now allowing yourselves to be escorted back to? That'll be in quest. In quest. 
to the hall. To the All right. Hall. Oh. Easy peasy teleport squeezy. Deep. I know. Damn, answer! You're getting so good at teleporting. Fuck, I love it. Okay, okay so we've Let's got the demon lords. We've got a little bit of activity that's going to happen on our on our way. So uno momento. Uh, so as thank you so much for moving my token. Jeez. Yeah, you're fine. As you guys are being led through the city, right? Um, where are we? Yeah, we're right there. Nobody knows. Not even me. Um, you guys. Uh, so you you move forward, right? Everyone's kind of like following this uh, group of of hobgoblins. And round the corner before you, all of the hobgoblins suddenly freeze, right? As round the corner before you comes striding out of the darkness a purple, rubbery-skinned, tentacle-faced creature. Oh, in black oh, robes. <laughs> and it rounds the corner, right? All the hobgoblins stop, and you see almost instinctively their hands go down to weapons, right? Their hands clutch hilts. And you see this creature standing before you, and it steeples its hands and it goes. And you hear this echoing voice. All of you hear this echoing voice in your mind, right? And goes, Ah, yes. The well-touted adventurers sent to do what must be done. How very nice to meet you. Hold on one second. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> it pulls out his cell phone. Right? You gotta call um, another line. And he, uh, uh so <clears throat> this thing... No, not right now. <laughs> this thing, um, looks towards all of you, and, uh, it's speaking into your minds, um, all at the same time, and it says, I would very much enjoy getting to know Alas, I am had busy my healing as rock have been eventful. I will be retiring. Perhaps we will meet later. And y'all got a name? We are Olquis. Oh. Oh. I'm not even going to pretend to know how to spell that. U-L-Q-U-E-S-S. -S. Hold, hold up, not ready. Uh-uh. O-H-P-P... P-L-L-75... -L okay, start from the beginning. U-L-Q-U... E S S O Quest. Okay. Time question mark. Time. Hey. Oh, Olquis question mark. Olquis question mark. <laughs> In three years, that is gonna make no sense. In Just three months, that's not gonna make any sense. What are you talking about? Um, that's not make any sense. So this uh, this mind flare, right? Like seeing seeing this kind of like traffic jam. He, he again, like he steeples his fingers and he doesn't walk. He glides back into the shadows out of out of sight. And you you all you can see just a visible tension in the uh, hobgoblins eat. Out of curiosity, does my quarry spirit 
recoil at another psionic presence? I think that's up to you. Recoil oh. or embrace? I feel like she would not like it at all. Probably like give you that uh, kind of like skin crawling feeling type scenario. Yeah. Like it just feels wrong. Especially like, when the I, thing I feel is like, like Matt would have a quiet voice at the back of his head saying, don't like it. Don't like it. I don't Do like not it. want it. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> all right. Uh, with that out of the way, we can proceed. Proceed. Proceed to the root. Proceed to the root. Proceed to the root. My fucking GPS. No. For... <laughs> Proceed to the root. Proceed we to the root. Lines. Uh, okay. So yes. root and route. Which one's Midwestern? Which one's not? Um, I think. All of them. I think route is the more i think it depends where you're at in the country but route tends to be i believe the more american version and route tends to be the more english version i believe because um, i found myself interchanging the two in the I same say, sentence absolutely and 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 the best thing about it is you are grammatically correct either way. It is perfectly acceptable. Yeah. Except when you're talking about a router. If you call it a router, I'm going to kill you. Okay, well, sure, uh, fine. It's a little Jeremy, is something going to jump out at me from this? No, time? that's uh, that's Gorger. His his token size <laughs> is is really big compared to where the the door or the wall is. So, um, previously, okay. I had him like just slightly because there's a way you can like uh position a token to where it it's not on the grid oh gotcha but he's snapped to grid right now Oof. um okay so uh rolvuk leads you all forward and you are taken back into azrock's fest hall um and then these guys leave because they've got other shit to patrol Bye, thanks, Rolvuk. Rolvuk's still here, but the rest of them leave. Uh, um, so, bye, uh, rear guard. You were one, once again. Comforting. You guys are led into the fest hall of Azrock, Legion Commander, um, and you are brought forward. That guy's not in your way. Uh, Rolvuk, where's he at? Rolvuk is kind of the one that escorts you in this time. Um, and his guard stay outside for the moment. Um, so again, as you, as you come in, um, this time, previously, when barely you Barely been gone half an hour. Yeah, barely been gone half an hour, right? Um, but this time, the, uh, the activity within the Fest Hall is different, right? Previously, it had been, um chatter people eating drinking um it, it actually seemed like a fest hall this one you walk into a much more quiet a much more subdued um atmosphere um and there are a bunch of people whispering now right um you walk in and you uh Rolvuk takes you out into the center of the room um and he presents you to Azrock Legion Commander and uh Azrock uh, who has his his head in one of his hands right he kind of looks up ever so slightly right and he leans over towards Lurkana who's standing at his side uh, and she leans in and he whispers there's some whispering back and forth between Right, and Love then he fun. kind of, he kind of nods, right, and then he says, "How surprising, all to have returned, but fortuitous. You were bold in your suggestions earlier, but it seems that you are not without." ability that is good the deed has been done
Yes. And I give him the head. Okay. Do you, what oh, do you that's, do that's with the, the head? Blood trail from the stump. You like? I don't know. Gonna you just like on the ground. I'm put not it like, down, like, or you toss it at him, or you know, throws it at his feet. I look. I hold it out like if he wants it, but if he doesn't make a move, I just put it down. What's the he box? Does, he does not make a move for it. What's the box? Um, no, I just put it down. As you put it down, right, uh, Lurkana raises a hand and snaps her fingers, right, and uh, this little goblin off to the side kind of like <laughs> rushes forward, right, um, and he takes the head and he runs to the south of, just the south side of the Dais of Bones that, uh, that Azrock's throne is upon. Right, and you see, there's a there's like a little like, um, trophy shelf, or something, um, and and there's a couple of different things kind of like displayed out on this thing, right? One is this uh, kind of like great big stinger. You've seen one before, Bones. Actually, it looks like the stinger from a wyvern, right? Oh, okay. Um, another is a, uh, uh, the head of a drow individual, right? And, um, then there are a couple of other ones. There's a couple of things on the wall behind them. Ezra, actually any, I know Ezra has it, so Ezra, you can roll me one, but anyone who has proficiency in history can roll me a history check. Uh, nope. I don't think I'm. Okay. No. Um, maybe it's because uh, Bones's attention is brought to the different trophies. Maybe that's the reason why. Damn, I fucking love trophies. You're you're just a little more enthralled with everything, right? Um, but you see, splayed out on a dish on this kind of like little trophy shelf is a hand, a human sized hand that has this fat signet ring on it. Does that mean anything to me? And it takes you, this is what the history check is. It takes oh, I you, understand. Okay. it takes you a second, right? To kind of like be like, wait a second. Is that, and then you get this just kind of like brief recall of a conversation with a um, a dark-skinned noblewoman whose brother had been missing, and she flashed you a signet ring that had the oh, same that. Um, the same kind of like a family crest, basically. Mm. Pull up, pull up. I think I have this somewhere. Wait. Espel it's the note asks search. to find her brother in Skullport. Crisando is his name. Look for his signet. <gasps> That's what Three Strings wanted us to do. Oh. In fact, somebody currently, I have no idea who, but one of us four is holding a bag of that gems. Three Strings gave us to of deliver. Moonstones, I think. That's I don't think it's me. I, look, I don't care. Somebody has it. I don't have a relationship with that man. So. I was holding it. Was. Are we supposed to deliver the bag to him? No, we're supposed to deliver the bag to oh. Halal Kladani? Halal Kladani. Yeah. Uh, whatever. As it catches my eye, I'm like, hey, uh, Lord Azrock. Sorry, not not hey. Um, that's uh, that's a mighty mighty nice uh, hand and ring ring you have there. So Azrock, his head kind of like tilts, and you you watch uh, Lurkana. Uh, actually, you know you, you have a lot of really really nice things. I really love trophies too. I'll be honest with you. You watch. Okay, so sequence of events, right? Azrock kind of like tilts his head as you address him. You watch Lurkana grind, like grind her teeth at your kind of informal addressing 
of him. I called him Lord. I said Lord Azrock. <laughs> and then, and then, as you kind of like go into a more conversational, like I really like your trophies, man. <laughs> right? You watch, uh, you watch as Azrock kind of like shifts slightly on his throne, and he says, "Taken many of them in my years." I do not keep them all, and many that I do keep store them elsewhere after a time. The ones here are either important reminders or fresh reminders. <laughs> sure, sure, as you would. Hey, if you don't mind me asking, where, where, where did you get that, that hand and ring? From its owner. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. But like a bold tongued nobleman from the city above who yeah, thought himself higher than those around him. And there's a little like banging of fists on tables from the the others in the um hall, right? Um and then, Azrak says, sometimes these people need to be reminded that they are mortal. Ah, so he yet lives. Well, he was Maybe. reminded. <laughs> God. Like the implication being there, like he got his reminder, and then Azrock got bored. <laughs> so, uh, how do they learn from that? I have little patience in teaching slavers. I can get behind that. Ah, right, that's fair. That's fair. Didn't know he's a slaver. Good to know. I like while, the cut of your jib. While his, uh, you guys say that right, and then he goes while his offer was a practical and lucrative one. From such a man, the business venture would surely have failed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Under yeah. no, yeah. like, Doesn't no, slaves. it's not that he, idea. yeah, it's not that he killed him because he's a slaver. It's he killed him because he would have been a, he is an asshole and he would have been a shitty business partner. Yeah, well, we don't like assholes either, so it's fine. Do we do we want to negotiate for this ring or, or, or do you think that lady's just gonna well, be okay if we just like you don't technically need the ring, like not unless this is Kal-El's hand, right? Is it no, no, no. different Kal different quest. Different quest, Jay. <laughs> oh. Different quest. The, well, the, the what, what you need you're delivering something from three strings to Kalal, right? And then this is a noble one woman, Esvale. Who has asked you to look for her brother? Two different quests. Well, technically, we have right. found part of him. That is true. But do we need proof? Is you can my try question. to negotiate if you want. Oh, wouldn't hurt to ask. Okay. Um, hey, uh, Lord Azrak. Uh, so, a haughty woman up top asked us to find her brother. Pretty sure he belonged to that hand. <laughs> he, you you hear Azrock kind of like crack a chuckle uh, at your at your phrasing, <laughs> like you're speaking his language now, right? Mm -hmm. Is there any way we could uh, I don't know, work out a deal to have that signet ring? Kind of he kind of he that, chuckles again and he says. We've just become allies, and you're already asking for favors. How typical. Well, trade might be in order. I guess it might have been a little presumptuous. He laughs, right? And he says, I have no need of the hand of ring. The reminder to other visitors that they know their place. But the thing of minor, 
We have many other ways of showing humility. Is that not right? And there's more fist banging. Right? Um, oh yeah, cut him up. And so he just kind of like he kind of like gestures offhandedly at the uh, the trophy shelf, and that same goblin, right, kind of like who who just put the head of Kinrob on the the shelf, and like hey. Uh, yes, yeah, the trophy he's, goblin. He's, he's, he's the Dispatch trophy goblin. The trophy goblin. He, he snatches the <laughs> hand and he runs it over to you, and he kind of like throws it at your feet, basically, and then he <laughs> kind of like runs off so to the side. Now you're running around with three severed hands. <laughs> this hand, by the way, is not preserved. It's not taken care of. There is, <laughs> there is. Uh, it was obviously like dipped in something, right? So it's not just putrid. Uh, but it is rotting. They have like formaldehyde down it's, here. Yeah, it's something basically to like help stop the uh, the the decay, or at least the yeah, stench of it. Ball. Right, well, yeah, yeah. I sure sure appreciate that. Well, your work is also appreciated. We are not cowards, but when faced with many strong foes, we must be careful, judicious in our resources. Attacking Kinrob could have cost us many men that we need fending off the drow. You have alleviated a pressure. Good. Under pressure. Doing so, you have also proven yourself to be capable ally. Uh, uh, last... uh, quick, quick question. No, don't, don't interrupt the board. Uh, we encountered a... Illithid walking your streets, uh, it, would he be one of these powerful threats, or is he an ally too? Ulquis. Yeah, that's what he said. I heard it in my, my brain. He didn't actually say it. <laughs> you you watch you watch Azrock uh, visibly sigh, like his whole body kind of slumps, right? <laughs> and he says, Bird. An agent of the Xanathar. And there's a hush that kind of like falls over the room. Ezra walks in with a shoddy. <laughs> no, it's not Zentarum. Oh, right. Sorry, sorry. Wrong one. <laughs> wrong, wrong evil organization. Yeah, wrong evil organization. Shotgun <laughs> <laughs> would be, oh, what's the movie where the person shoots themselves into a garage, a uh, garbage can with a shotgun? Oh god, I know exactly what you're talking about too. Um, Just the force propels them backwards into a garbage can. <laughs> I gotta find it now. I gotta find it because it's gonna bother me. No. Uh, so he says, he says, Ulquis is an agent of the Xanathar who constantly seeks to negotiate, wanting forces for this. That trade agreements, free passage, rights to certain levels, treasure, tribute. The Xanathar. The Xanathar has been a long term faction. The Legion must. But. We have been here for some time. We have dealt with the Xanathar in the past. And you, you, as he's saying this, right, he's not just speaking to you anymore. He's speaking to the room, right? Says, we have dealt with the Xanathar in the past, and we will do so again. This time there's no banging of fists to a company. Statement. He is making a point. There's just quiet. Thank you. He 
he leans over to whisper to Lurkana. There's a short stint of conversation that passes between them. And then Lurkana kind of steps up. She says, Everyone out except for war leaders. We have business to discuss. Is that including us, or are we supposed to stay? You will stand your ground. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hell yeah, bones. And warrior. so the the <laughs> room, people begin to filter out of the room. Most of the goblins leave, right? Champion of um, death. Or I say most of the goblins. All the goblins leave. Um, Damn, no goblin war leaders? No little assassin boys? No <laughs> goblin war leaders. Um, fuck up. The bugbears leave? Do the puppers leave too? The puppers do not leave. Nah, they're war leaders. <laughs> well, they're, they're puppers. Yeah, pupper war leaders. Uh, most of the, uh, the room filters out. The only person that sticks around is uh, Rolvuk. And um, a few moments later, another two um, hobgoblins with red sashes come into the building. Okay. And... That one. Okay. Um, Azrock kind of stands up. Um, Bones. Whoa. You're the only one with a high enough perception notice. That as Azrock stands, um, and he begins to step down off of the bone throne and dais, his hand, like, flits out to steady himself on the throne, and it mm -hmm. almost looks like for a half second he stumbles as he's standing. Hmm. And then he walks down pass you all and over to the table, right? The kind of like a war table with the map that's kind of like drawn out. And I think at this point, um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the Andy Dandy player map that everyone should have access to. Um, most of which is represented on the map that is here. Um, in addition to a couple of things that you guys are missing, right? I've actually um, done most of the map, huh? Yeah, you guys have done a bunch of the map. But again, it's that scenario of you've uncovered a lot of the map. But because of the way the cities work, because of the way the Stromkolder areas work, I've revealed a lot more than you've actually seen. But that's because, right. like, on a 2D map, it, it, it just looks like... Oh, if you only reveal the the winding path you guys have taken, you're going to see so little. But you're actually in a massive cavern, right? You can see up and over, and you can see buildings looming here and there, and you can see... So you're actually seeing, seeing in character a lot more than you would see represented on a map. So, um, but before we get to that, right? Before Azrock uh, begins to um, talk to you all and make war plans, we're going to go ahead and take a break. Um, and we will be back in, uh, five, ten minutes, and, um, we'll pick back up there. Y'all in a little Sounds bit. Good! Bye, everybody! Bye!